Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and a happy Saturday to everyone. So in this video, I am going to show you um, on how to use Wireshark. Okay, I'm going to take all the basics for you to understand on how to use Wireshark uh, packet capture utility. And this is going to help a lot if you are a network administrator or a rookie uh, network security uh, tester or administrator. Okay. And if you have just stepped into this field uh, after doing your CCNA certifications or CCNP certifications, all right? And if you have not had a prior working experience, so this video is going to help you uh, in terms of uh, on how to use Wireshark uh, in a very basic manner. And uh, before we jump into the Wireshark tutorial basics, we will uh, have to go through some uh, networking basics, okay? And it will be shrewd practice. To, uh, for us to learn uh, the OSI layer model okay and which is very basic when you uh, start when you step into a career um, in networking background all right and also we would be looking on what and how packet works in a networking uh, arena okay so basically uh, you may ask me a question what is OSI model so basically you can see here OSI stands for open systems Inter uh, interconnection so it was developed by ISO international organization for standardization okay, basically what is a OSI model it is a conceptual model or a structural manner in which a data is transmitted from a source and destination uh, in very simple terms and uh, that has all the um, all the layers through which your uh, data is uh, transmitted in a in a in a procedure basically a predefined procedure you can say okay and there are seven layers within this osi model and uh, each layer has its own demarcation or limit on what roles it can perform so you need to understand each and every layer um, very carefully so that you understand Wireshark a bit better, all right? So I'm going to open this web page and quickly show you how the layers are defined here. So very first layer is the physical layer, okay, which is responsible for um, the physical uh, equipments uh, connected within a network. So all the physical equipments constitute the physical layer. For example, the physical layer can consist of so guys, physical layer can consist of uh, the um, copper cable or optical fiber cables. Okay, all comes in physical equipment uh, and uh, your switches, modems, network adapters, hubs, all these fall under physical layer category. And whilst these are constituted to work in a way, okay, where uh, it begins the starting point of the data transmission the next layer comes is the data link layer which is a very important layer okay in networking which is nothing but it is going to act as a bridge uh, where once the data gets uh, uh, triggered right so it from the source to destination it bridges i mean a gap or i mean it establishes uh, it establishes a bridge between the source and destination and it acts as the successful um, uh, transporter of the data okay to travel in an efficient and smooth manner and the message that we are sending from source it ensures that it goes and successfully reaches the destination point all right so that is the responsibility of data link layer and it also establishes um, it assigns protocols right the transmission uh, control protocol or it is IPv4 uh, protocol that is being used TCP or IP protocols so these kind of uh, assignments happen within the data link layer and particularly it uses your computer's MAC address to uh, transmit and receive the data as in when required so the next layer is the network layer which uh, particularly consists of your on router your default gateway falls within the network layer category which is responsible to route your uh, data packets to the uh, assigned destination node okay so this is where the network layer comes in then the transport layer is responsible to uh, 
transport all your data packets to the destination uh, address okay by breaking each of the data packets okay in a segmented fashion okay and then uh, it is responsible I mean it acts as your uh, transporter I mean so it acts as your uh, vehicle to uh, transport the uh, data from source to destination basically it's responsible to ensure the data travels in an efficient manner to the destination address next the session layer is as usual it's going to uh, set up a session for you okay set set, set up a session in the sense uh, when you open a web page right okay so the t the time with when it buffers right that is called the session all uh, i mean creation okay of the i mean destination web page that you are trying to access okay so basically you are um, let's say you are trying to access facebook.com right so you would be the destination server for the facebook web page web pages server okay and for it you are the destination for you your facebook is your uh, destination so it's working in a two way two way channel so when you are trying to open up a web page and it starts buffering right for a second or second or two so that actually happens in this presentation layer where it tries to create a i mean it sorry it happens in the session layer fifth layer okay where it tries to create a session for you to open up the uh, desired web page that you are trying to access in a browsing session so that is called the session layer basically it tries to channel up a session for you okay between the um, destination and the source devices so the presentation layer right so the, the data that travels within the packets right it's all often it's encrypted okay it will be in an encrypt, uh, encrypted format encapsulated um, within a packet okay so basically the data that you are uh, that is getting transported is usually not in a human readable format it's encrypted basically using encryption algorithms whatever okay so algorithm may, may be anything sha256 or uh, advanced encryption standards all these algorithms are used to encrypt the data that is uh, traveling via the transport layer so this presentation layer is the most important thing here in presenting you the data in a human readable format where decryption occurs okay okay and then uh, the data is uh, presented to you in a readable manner okay that is the that is the responsibility of this particular layer like i said before all these layers have uh, demarcation in uh, what roles they are uh, set to do okay so each so for example presentation layer cannot do a job of the session layer session layer cannot do the uh, job of the presentation layer so each layer has its own duties to do okay then the application layer okay it's the web browsers basically okay where like i said right when you type the facebook.com page it buffers for a second and after which the data the actual data that is presented how it's presented to you in the form of a browser right so that is where that is where this application layer falls in your web browsers are the best example for a application layer within an osa model so uh, i'm not going to take much of the time in this video guys i will make another video and explain you how a packet works okay so it's clear for you before we jump into the wireshark section thank you so much